Why do some skate parks get hundreds of thousands of visitors each year while others lie mostly empty? Hoping to find the answer to that question, I ended up speaking to some of the brightest minds in skateboarding. Skate park designers, city planners, cultural and architectural professors, skate park advocates, and even the skateboarding coordinator for the city of Malmo, Sweden. All to answer one simple question. How do we build an effective skate park? Before we even get there, why make a video like this? I live in Cincinnati, Ohio. For over 30 years, skateboarders in the Cincinnati area have been pushing for the city to build a public skate park, and its thousands of skateboarders are forced to travel to nearby cities in order to skate. In 2022, an organization called the Cincinnati Skate Park Project finally generated enough momentum to secure a building site. They were also granted partial funding from the city to build its first real skate park. With skateboarding now in the Olympics, and with hundreds of skate parks popping up globally every year, let's take some time out to understand how to make an effective skate park. A lot of your skate park users are going to be young people who can't drive themselves. And so they need a way to get to the skate park physically. So here in San Francisco, our newest and like highest end skate park is called Hilltop Skate Park. And as you might imagine, it is at the top of a very large hill in not a super dense or well transit surf part of the city. So it doesn't get much use. Contrast that to South of Market Skate Park, which is like under the freeway, it is the most accessible physically to the most number of users because it's right near the train, it's right near bus, it's right near a bunch of schools. So I think making sure kids can get there is big. Is it a nice area? Is it a nice space? Is there greenery? Are there trees? Is it like architecturally pleasing? Some of the best skate spots in the world are like just good flat somewhere that's nice to hang out. If it's like somewhere that's close to shops or close to a nice park or close to a place to swim, then you can go like, oh, go swim and skate and shop. Whenever you're going swimming or shopping, you'll swing by the skate park and that, that breaks down those barriers. From a safety perspective, being able to come in and not feel like you're getting run over from everybody is a great start. And thinking about the pathways and the connections and the staging area so that people can really have an opportunity to survey the skate park and understand the different zones before you start going in and trying to test the waters too quickly, especially for beginners. If you're a beginner skateboarder, is this an open space where you feel like when you walk into the space, are you going to feel safe or are you going to feel exposed? Is there a little corner for you where you can like practice ollies because, you know, there's social barriers too of stepping into to a space. So what we've been trying to do is really focusing on creating those spaces even inside the skate park as well as outside of where are those pop out zones where people can stand and enjoy the space or kind of figure everything out without getting in the way of everything. And so when you create that opportunity, you're sort of also creating a safer way to experience and coming into the park. Don't try to put so much into one place, create some opportunities for some arrival areas. And maybe a good skate park might only have five really good things in it instead of 10 okay things. And then it feels really crammed and dangerous if we want to make spaces more inclusive, especially the research I do is mainly with women. Women often don't feel included in skate parks. There's a group called Skate Like a Girl who does amazing work. They're doing programs to help girls and women and people who identify as women to get some basic skills, to feel comfortable, to understand etiquette, so that they can have a little bit of the, like the resources, right, to go into a skate park and feel somewhat comfortable. Do you want this one park to be really diverse um, and inclusive then you there's a lot of programming because people have to be clued in again you can't just go oh everybody's welcome it doesn't work that way
there are all kinds of physical things you want to provide. So, you know, depending on the climate, shade from rain and sun, water coolers, benches, places for people to sit. I've seen skate parks with good lighting so they can be used in the evenings. But I think the most important thing is to realise that a that skate parks are not sports facilities. Yes, they're a place where people do a sports-like activity, but essentially, above all, they're a community space at which people happen to come and skate. So if you go to a skate park, and there might be 50, 100 people there, but at any one time, probably only three, five, 10, are actually riding at any one moment. At the rest of the time, people are stood around waiting for their turn, talking to each other or just watching. So in that sense, the landscape around it is almost as important as the skate park itself. You want to be able to welcome people to come there and stay there and feel comfortable there and not feel that they're you know, pushed into some unpleasant place with no visual or other connection to the, the streets or park around it. We had a nonprofit here in the city of North Minneapolis called Juxtaposition Arts come to us and said, hey, we have some plan here um, that we probably aren't going to develop for a number of years. We'd like to activate it through a skate space. So we worked with their students to design and create a skate park. It turned out to be a really cool space for beginners and just to create access for a neighborhood that really had no skate spaces. And we were able to do some really creative programming. Juxta was just going to be a temporary park, but it turned out so well. Uh, that they actually built uh, a $12 million new facility around the skate park. They were originally going to just tear down the skate park when it was done, you know, after, after three to four or five years. It was such a success, and they recognized that, that they ended up not using that space for their building and built the building around it, which was pretty cool and gratifying to see that it made that kind of impact. There was certainly one town in the UK, a little town called Dorchester, that had a problem with crime and disorder, which they associated with skateboarding. And they built a skate park, partly to get kids off the street. And they found that crime and disorder went down in the town, not up. If you do a skate park right, what you're doing is you're building a place where the community comes together, it talks to each other, it builds community cohesion, it builds independence and reliability these are all good things that we want in our in our society. I don't think you should build finished skate parks. I don't think you should finish them. What we see so much of the time is that there's a community that's fighting for a skate park. They spend 10 years, 20 years working with the municipality to get their dream park. That really builds a strong organization. It builds the theme. And it builds the, the human glue that is the skate scene. And then the park gets built and it's like, oh, here it is, it's finished. And all the pure and perfect ideas that people had in their head, they're no longer pure and perfect. They're now manifested in this one version. And people skate that for a year or two and then they're like, oh, well, I guess there's nowhere for me to go. And the community that was built around making the skate park, it kind of dissolves because like council goes, you've had your skate park, you should be just be happy and, and satisfied now. But human beings aren't happy and satisfied by having what they already have. They are satisfied and, and happy and find purpose by working for the next thing. If you want the community to grow, then it's better to have a skate park that you can change. It's like maybe build half of it and then have a DIY spot on the side, which you tear down every few years. And then everyone has something to look forward to. One of the outcomes we've had from the, the skate parks in Malmö is that the local skaters insist on, on being apprentices for the building of the skate park. And a lot of companies do that now, where they take on local apprentices so that there'll be like a local knowledge of how to build parks. The product is not the physical product. The product is the engagement of the community. Skate parks are unique facilities. They're not, they're not like a baseball diamond or a football field or a tennis court. You know, each one is unique. 
each one is a kind of a challenge. Each one gives its own opportunities. It's a strange metaphor, but there are a comparison, but they're a bit like golf courses in that respect. You know, each one, each hole, each feature throws up a different challenge. Different people have different ideas about the goals of a skate park. So the skate park can be affected based on what your goal is. If you want to use a skate park to host big events and draw people in, that's very different than having local community skate spots. And different communities have very different ideas about what a skate park should be and who it should serve. So I think that's the key thing you have to do is decide why do we want this? Who's it going to serve? And then you can measure the effectiveness based on your goals. But there's not one standard. There's just not one standard skate park. A successful application of the skate park concept is going to be very specific to each community. That's a combination of the input from the skaters, the experience of the designer, Inevitably, the skate park needs to coexist with other things. You don't always have to build a skate park skate park. Sometimes it can be a public place which just happens to be good for skateboarding, where skateboarders are welcomed and integrated in with lots of other public uses. Now, I suppose my favorite place in the world is the Swedish city of Malmö. They're the city who I think more than anywhere else in the world have really taken on board skateboard culture and embraced it. So they have DIY spots that skateboarders have built themselves. They've got bits of public art, which you can skate on. They've got a whole high school, Brigariet, which is based around skateboarding as the inspiration for the high school curriculum. So they, they've really thought about how all the different ways that you can take on skateboarding and integrate it in with the city culture. How do you sort of weave in the activity and the culture of what a skate park brings into the fabric of the rest of the community? The separation and the boundaries of a skate park may start to blur a little bit. We still have people pushing back and saying they want things fenced and locked up and gated and controlled are the words they're using. It can create a bad result of an us versus them and people kind of pushing back in that direction of tearing those boundaries down and tearing down those barriers is going to be important to continue that movement of more integration into the fabric of a city landscape or, or in a public area landscape similar to what's happening in Europe. We're not quite there yet and we still have a lot of work to do with all the different you know areas across this country of help them to understand what a skate park looks like, what it can feel like, and that they shouldn't be scared or intimidated of the activity it brings and how to make that more a part of everyday life and everyday culture. After all these conversations, we decided to circle back to the planned Camp Washington Skate Park in Cincinnati. When it comes to the location, the skate park is easily accessible via public transit. It's also located between two of the city's larger attractions, Camp Washington Chile and the American Sign Museum. The plot is easily viewable from the street, and its central location is great for hosting inclusive skate programming. Finally, the skate park will be designed to reflect the community it serves. All of these attributes lend well to the park being successful. I think most people now accept that skate parks are a good idea but it's more a question of how do you do it right? How do you do it properly? How do you do it effectively?